Imagine this. You are an 8-year-old boy who just got home after school. You open your uncle's shitty Vio laptop to watch 144p episodes of Spongebob on YouTube. Or maybe perhaps go to Newgrounds and play some Flash games. When you stumbled upon an ad, build free games on roblox.com, you wonder what it is. You click it, and it directs you to a login page. You were struck with sheer awe. You registered and your childhood suddenly steers somewhere deep and somewhere fun. That 8 year old boy was me. Instantly creating an account with a password I'd probably forget. But what should, what should my username be? Of course, my favorite Pokemon in a number I wouldn't forget. I browse the game section and click the first thing I see. Zombies attack at McDonald's. <laughs> I was instantly blown away by the graphics. Though it wasn't scary, I had a blast just spending the entire day shooting zombies. Days and months have passed. This kid on a crappy laptop that heats up as soon as he plays a flash game for more than 30 minutes had the time of his life browsing through different games with the character that has a picture of a penguin as a t-shirt. Do you remember those tux penguins that cost like one ticket? Yeah. Those were the t-shirts. And of course, I only had one of the three faces that I could find, which was the chill face. The thing about being a kid is that anything you'd encounter won't really have much sentimental effect on you. Anything you'd encounter is basically just there not more than a year. Once you've had your fun, it's time to let it go. And that's how I felt about Roblox at first. I never played this game with the intent to be active in its community. I only played this game because I saw that funny looking ad and I hopped on a game because it had McDonald's in it. Every game I've played was a game I very much so enjoyed. From running away from a speeding wall, to just hanging out and roleplaying in a resort. Yeah, do you remember that? Sonic the Hedgehog XX's Island Resort. Oh my god, that fills me with so much cringe memories. Not to mention there was an easter egg event which was basically just composed of eggs falling from the sky, which filled me both with fear and fascination because I thought my game was being hacked. I mean, I'm the only player, and the game was literally just the, uh, a base plate with a house on it. I never knew how those eggs worked till I realized they were wearable eggs. Disregard the fact that you could only wear one hat. Mind you though, the first hat I've had was the sword prop. It was 50 tickets, and the 5 days was worth it. But I only got the hat because I thought it was a sword that I could equip. I was a dummy. It's obvious, but my favorite genre of games were basically zombie tycoons. I played it for hours on end. Haven't even finished it. I usually just stay there and shoot zombies with the ray gun that I eventually bought after spending so much time. Oh, now I remember, it was the Zombie Defense Tycoon by Chakra. I also spent my Christmas playing Roblox. <laughs> now I'm pretty sure you'd know the feeling of being allowed to be up past 12 because your relatives are opening presents downstairs. Though in my case, they'd be eating downstairs while I'm in my room playing random obstacles. Speaking of obbies, one of the oldest obbies I've played were the, uh, Who Killed obbies. The first game I've played was actually the Spongebob one, and they were all so simple yet I'd still enjoy them. The satisfaction of finishing a Nobby while getting a grayed out notification every 15 seconds telling you that they're regenerating a giver. There's also the satisfaction of hearing this noise. Mind you, givers are a reward for players who finish the Nobby. These are usually either trust givers, uh, a trust is a tool that you could click and it would spawn a platform where you're standing. It's pretty much like Frozone from The Incredibles. There's also simple body morphs. Uh, well, not really body morphs, but they give away hats for some reason. They give hat givers, and I thought that was like permanent. I can still remember the sadistic enjoyment that I've had knocking people off of the map because they'd go above their heads and push them off using the trust. Though, of course, occasionally I'd let them hop on and bring them towards the end of the obstacle. 
And how could I forget about their horror games? These were either obstacles filled with jump scares or the generic Area 51 game. Like it'll be the same place but with a different uh, zombie or killer or enemy. And you only hear two things and two things only. The horror banjo. And the occasional lightning sound effect. Though sometimes you'd encounter those cream of the crop horror games where they'd usually jump scare you with a picture of any horror villain accompanied by the sound effect of the subspace trip mine. This shit was so fucking loud, it traumatized me. I never played any Roblox horror game after that for an entire year just because I was so fucking scared. I also encountered one of the most revolutionary games back then. Person 299's minigames. If I played zombie games for hours, I'd play this game at least 3 days a week. This was so fun. The randomness, the fact that you can also get rewards from winning them and eventually lose them on that pachinko game. Which I could tell you right now is fucking rigged, and you can't convince me otherwise. This was pretty much the forefather of games such as Survive the Disasters and Roblox Wear games. Though of course Roblox Wear games are a uh, direct parody to WarioWare. Near the end of 20, uh, near the end of 2009, I've met a bunch of people with the same camo uniform. This baffled me. Never before have I seen an actual group of people hanging out and lazing about. I asked the person who was in front of them, who surely enough was the leader. Hey, what are these group? I asked with my horrid grammar. Sup, he answered. We're the Roblox Assault Team. I looked at their uniforms and lo and behold, there's an abbreviation etched into their chests. Rat. <laughs> 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 this may seem funny right now, but Jesus Christ, they look like the coolest people I've seen. And that was the day I started participating in clans, all thanks to Stealth Matt. The community was great. I'd used to join raids in their forts, knew what it felt like in a simulated training camp with their own drill sergeants, which looking back now, I've adorned them like gods, and I realize they're probably like two or three years older than me. Oh yeah, Roblox also had a contest feature. The first one I joined was the Zeke and Luther show one, which if I could remember had prizes such as a skate helmet and a rental skateboard. You can submit your own game and other people could vote for its relevance to the event and vice versa. Sometimes I'd just wait the ones that had the positive rating to increase my score, and sometimes I'd submit my own game, which despite being a base, uh, being just a base plate, would be titled Skateboard Contest Submission, Please Vote. And as expected, it wouldn't really get voted that much. As a kid, I also watched this YouTuber called Max, who makes these funny, albeit crappy videos about him interacting with an actual fucking Robloxian. I kid you not, it was cheap green screen, but it amazed me so much, I'd watch the same video over and over. Yes? You can't have it. Why not? Because you're stupid. I'm not stupid. <laughs> yes, you are. No, I'm not! I'm not stupid! I'm not stupid! Fine, have a fing strawberry. This was the Citizen Kane to my nine year old self. Actual Kino, this guy. There was also this guy who made this goofy Roblox random videos, and I'm pretty sure it was a compilation of random skits, which reminds me of the um, Ass Def movie. And if I could remember right, the name was called Roblox Gone Crazy. It's by JJ5x5, or rather JJ5x5.
But of course, that one and a half year of gameplay was only the tip of the iceberg. I've never been this deep in the uh, community until that one fateful day when I discovered the Roblox testing site. I forgot how I found the website. I either heard it from a friend or Roblox announced it for a day with a link that leads to it. It's pretty much like Roblox except this one has test before it. So it looks like a... So the link is test.roblox.com. This website doesn't have anything particularly special besides the fact that it had less than 20 players. I never played anything on that specific test site aside from my favorite place called the Iron Cafe. You'll always see the same people hanging out, and that's where I've met some of the first few batch of e-friends. And funny enough, we were all just fucking about, innocent minds just thinking alike. Fast forward months later. The first testing site has been shot down. We were then introduced to game test. Though it was an exact replica of the first test site I was in, this one had an extra feature for recording which I wasn't really aware of till the site eventually shut down again. Site test was where I really fell into a deep community. 11 year old me was just hanging around as usual when I noticed. Wait, I'm the only guy here who looks broke as hell. Everyone had builders club and their characters were swagged up. Later did I find out that you can actually get free Builders Club in Robux by using a fake credit card, and oh my god did I go full forward. I used a fake name generator website and purchased Outrageous Lifetime Builders Club. Uh, but if I could remember, their version of Lifetime is them basically making your Builders Club expiration date to the year 2100 plus, etc, etc. I felt like a king. I bought every expensive hat in the catalog and I saw myself climbing the social hierarchy. Though the purchases were limited per account, I easily bypassed it by making more accounts and just buying my own t-shirts. I've pretty much spent the majority of my time on testing sites where it would always be the same people I'd interact with, occasionally meeting moderators along the way. I've tested features such as the Mega Server which allowed up to 50 people on a single server, the Terran Generator tool, the Water Buoyancy, and when, when the Water Buoyancy got released, we were so amazed, like the physics were improving and we were all just cheering for it. There was also the Dynamic Lights, etc, etc. April 1st, 2012. <laughs> Who wouldn't forget that day? That was the day the Roblox website got hacked. Well, not really the Roblox website, but somebody got access to an admin panel. We were so oblivious to this. I was hanging out with some people in a game test version of a Welcome to Roblox building. And that's the same place where I met moderators like Sorkus who was testing the game. And uh, I think he was the lead of the uh, testing and development team that time, but it was TFB Saxman. He was actually the guy who gave me my red banded top hat. So we were just lounging around when somebody chatted, Yo, did you guys get the Roblox notifs? We were all confused. What do you mean? They're posting memes on the Roblox notifs, he said. And of course, we all logged in to look. And to our surprise, we saw the message. Remember kids, trust anyone with your password. Or Minish is climbing in your windows, and much more. Each message differing whenever we'd go back to look at the website. Not only that, but there's also some items that are being posted in the catalog. There were items such as the Sub Zero helmet, a derp face, and much more. It was like watching a country fall into deep chaos when we were in our own little bomb shelter. <laughs> The Roblox site and the test site that we were in were temporarily closed, but we were still in the game. We didn't want to leave because this was a historical, albeit unfortunate moment. Looking back, it's actually melancholic how fast time flies by. The community changes. I would say the games are suddenly becoming too repetitive, but to be honest, games had been repetitive since then too. 
If 2021 had a bunch of clicker games, 2009 had a bunch of tycoons. To be fair, it's pretty much amazing how no matter how hard Roblox tries to make their game family friendly, most of their fanbase would always either be a young adult or a predator. And with the rise of TikTok and the internet raising a bunch of children, it unfortunately had a new breed of e-daters. Roblox aged like spoiled milk under the scorching sun. It's disappointing to think that the game that pretty much gave you your childhood grew up to become a nesting pool for children prone to predators, or children who treat grooming as a minor subject, finding different ways to make their avatars as sexual as possible. This video isn't enough to state everything that I've experienced, because Roblox is a whole other universe. It's a place where you can be whoever you like, whenever you like. And it's crazy how things change. Back then you'd always hope the game gets more realistic, gets better graphics, and now that you look at these games that pretty much had no originality and are just Roblox ports of popular games, you'd wish to just be in the Iron Cafe again, playing the same sets of music, hanging out with people, hearing those loud Roblox footsteps that sound like a hammer hitting against the wall. Seeing those ugly little studs that you walk on, and those low quality one tick shirts you wear, and that same chill face you've always had. <sighs> Technology really evolves too fast that even I can't keep up. The games you usually criticize are now the games that you just want to play again. Low quality sound effects that put a tear in your eye as soon as you hear it. Though of course, Someone out there right now is probably having the time of their life, living their childhood like I did. I just wish they'd also experienced the way I've experienced this game. How you never needed to buy a Robux or a Builders Club to enjoy it. <sighs> what I'd give to get that back.